Hello everyone, welcome back to Steven Inks. On today's episode, we will be looking at, surprise, surprise, a fountain pen. Uh, this is the Twisby Diamond 580 ALR, um, which I received as part of my uh, Truffet um, pen enthusiast box. And um, this is the last pen for that month. And I'm gonna be showing you the parts, the features. I'm gonna compare it to another famous Twisby pen that I own and uh, tell you what I think about it. Oh, we're also going to make some art. So let's get into it right now. All right. And here we go. Um, presentation wise, I really like this box compared to what the eco came in sort of a plastic um, container. This is kind of crystal clear and you can see through it and it's mounted. It's like mounted like one of those um, ships in a bottle. I don't know if that makes sense at all. But it's like, it's right there. And then these little like mounting things. I don't know. I just think that's cool. Um, if you lift the plastic off, you, then you lift these supports off. And there's your pen just kind of hanging out. Uh, it looks nice. I'm gonna grab my Eco really quick, and um, that way you guys can see what uh, does it look like in comparison, because these are uh, two very common pens in the fountain pen world. Maybe you're trying to decide if you want one or the other. So if you're trying to decide, let's just take a quick look. Um, whoops, excuse me. So the 580 is about the same length and I wanna say it's just slightly a hair, I'm gonna get in focus there, uh, just slightly a hair longer than the Eco. Pistons look similar to each other, um, sort of a rounded piston on the ALR, just right there and uh, sort of a hexagonal shape to the Eco. Um, I have an in-depth video on the Eco, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but we're looking at this is an extra fine nib, and this is also an extra fine nib. You'll notice that there is a size difference between those two nibs. Um, this uh, 580 ALR looks kind of wider. I like that look. So um, let's say goodbye to Mr. Eco and let's look more at this pen right here. So um, the cap does post kind of awkwardly and I would count points against it, but if you uh, have an Eco, you probably know that those pens post super awkwardly too. I think this pen's more comfortable and it's long enough, just uh, unposted. Um, there's a ribbing on the on the edge of the uh, of this metal piece right here. I don't know how I feel about that. I haven't used it at all. Obviously, it's still bright and clean. Um, so maybe I'm wrong about this, but I kind of wonder if that's going to get uncomfortable. Um, that ribbing continues in the cap, so you can see that there. Uh, on the top, the finial here, we have the um, Twisby, see if I can get it to focus, logo. Some people complain about this logo, but I kind of like it. I think it's cool. Um, so you'll find that that's there, and it's it's nicer than the uh, the one on the Eco, if you look at the two of them together. The Eco one looks a little chintzy compared this nice raised um, kind of encased in resin sort of thing. So um, it's fun, it's nice. Let's see. Another thing that's different from the Eco and the uh, ALR is that the, the, the section actually twists off. So you can get this separated here and here's that section. Now a lot of people, um, who complain about the Eco, myself among them, complain that the section is prone to cracking. 
Now, I do not have this confirmed because I have not used it yet, but this metal section plus this little ring um, and, and this um, nib section right here, I gotta say, I think that's gonna crack less. It, it would make sense to me if it did crack less. Um, the piston operates in the same manner as the piston for the um, for the eco. It's a twist piston. And I think those parts are metal. We're gonna actually take a look at this and see if I'm right about that. Um, got a little rubber ring right here. I'm assuming that so that the cap has a nice satisfying twist closed where it, it, you get a little bit of rubbery tension right there. I like when a pen does that because uh, it makes me feel like the cap is secure. We're actually gonna go back to the box here. And uh, if you're familiar with Twizy products, you might wonder, did they include a little wrench for me to take my pen apart with? And they did and it's a metal one. Let's see if I can get this out. Oh yeah. And there's two sides to it. I'm not sure what the logic of that is, but I suppose if one side got damaged, because they're the same size, so I suppose if one side got damaged, you could use the other one. Um, little piston grease here, as they call it. Um, I still don't know how these silicone grease, I still don't know how these bottles work. Um, I guess it's plastic, but it's not very flexible. So how do you get the piston on? Um, I personally use a different kind of silicone grease in my pen, so that is what it is. This little plastic on the side here. Um, I guess that this part should come off, but it it doesn't, so we'll leave it. Um, it's kind of cool. It's a Twisby. All right. Awesome. Um, so in order to raise this up, we're going to raise the piston up and you're going to see a little um, gap right there. And that's where you insert the wrench. And then we can, oh, it's on there tight. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to take the piston off so y'all could see. I don't like to be scared of taking my pens apart for two reasons. One, that's the easiest way to get them clean. And two, if a pen doesn't come apart, I just, I don't want it. Um, cool. And I think, yeah, this is actually plastic. That's a shame. That's uh, a missed step in my opinion that they could have gotten something really cool if they had just made everything in this pen metal. Oh, well. Um, fits into little, there's little grooves in here that fit into the pen cap. So that'll be pretty secure. Man, that is a shame. I really wish they had went ahead and made the whole pen metal. Maybe they didn't think I was gonna check, huh, Twisby? You didn't think I was gonna check? Well, I'm, I'm a checker. I'm doing it for the people. Um, this goes back in here. And we're gonna just slide that back in. And with these threads, oops, you know, it's probably going to be, I'm going to, before I fill this up, I'm going to have to uh, re-establish this, uh, this pen. So um, I'll pull it back together and we'll fill it up with ink. To fill the Diamond 580 ALR, I have chosen the Lamy Crystal Ink. This is the Agate version. And um, ironically, it turns out that the slate gray finish of this pen um, is a perfect match with the color of the ink. Um, I don't know if the subscription box where I received this pen did that on purpose, but it's a nice touch because I was gonna use this ink anyway. It came with the pen. Um, you can see the video on that on my channel, but we are going to um, fill this pen with that ink, and I'm excited to show you the piston action of the pen. So as I twist, 
the piston goes down, pushing air out. And I'm going to put this in up to where the section starts. And then I'm going to pull up. And you can see the ink pulls up nicely. And that goes about two thirds of the way. But if I were to push it back in and pull back up, let's see if we can get a better second fill. Um, a little more. And let's just see what a third one does. For those of you who really are sticklers for getting your inks completely filled, personally, I don't mind if there's a little air bubble. And there is going to be a slight air bubble, but that's good enough for me. Let's do some test lines with this lovely, lovely pen. I definitely, I want to point out that um, Loving my eco, but it's really cool to see the faceting in the ink when you twist this around. It's mesmerizing. It's almost dizzying. Um, a little bit of a hard start, uh, which I did off camera, but I have a feeling the flow is going to be nice now that I've got it going. Um, yeah, this feels like the eco, but it feels a little bit smoother, a little bit wetter. Um, but the eco is a bit on the dry side, and I think that um, this 580 is a little bit on the dry side too. So if you're someone who loves your super wet fountain pens, you probably won't love this. I personally think it's fantastic. This is, um, by the way, if I haven't said it already, this is an extra fine nib that refuses to focus. Um, anyway, and if, if uh, like when I say dry feed, I don't mean that it can't keep up because it can do, it's running circles around uh, this paper, working really good, um, no hard starts. Uh, one thing that I like about a good fountain pen that can do some Reverse writing this is very scratchy in reverse. Um, and you can see evidence of skipping when it comes to the reverse writing. Let me see if I can get you a good look at that. So yeah, that's not great, but I might tune this a little bit, see if I can get the reverse writing going a little more consistently because I think reverse writing is one of the keys to um, being able to take your artwork with fountain pens to the next level. Um, you can take the line that you get from the pen itself. And sometimes with pressure, you can get a little bit more from it. Um, I try not to take that too far because, uh, you know, then you, you run the risk of... Um, that was my very noisy chair, by the way. Uh, you run the risk of destroying your nib, which is a tragedy. Unlike the Eco, the Diamond 580, you can actually buy um, nib sections to replace the ones you have. So if you do something to damage your nib, you can actually get the replacement section, um, as well as you, know, you can trade up or down the size of your nib that way if you find that Another one works better for you. Personally, I like this extra fine. I don't see a reason to change it. I do have a, a fine, a Twisby fine nib on my uh, Twisby Go. And despite, I mean, in addition to the fact that I'm not a big fan of the, um, of the Go in general, I find that that nib is points against the pen. And if I ever had to purchase it again, well, I don't think I would purchase a Twisby Go again, but if I had to, I would have gone with the extra fine. Um, this is where it's at for me. This is nice uh, mix of wetness of the nib to make it fun and interesting to draw with and um, dry enough that I can control where the lines go. And I think that that is something that artists for fountain pens really uh, appreciate. I know I appreciate it, and I've talked to several other artists who feel the same way. Um, dry feeds are a little more serviceable for drawing than wet feeds. Um, 
So dry feed is gonna serve the needs of the artist a little bit more in my opinion. You may have a different one, that's okay. On the internet, you can have multiple opinions at once and nobody explodes. So that's good. Um, by the way, I love this ink. This has nothing to do with the pen, but oh man, this is a gorgeous, it's almost like a, a pencil-like color, but it's very obvious it's not a pencil. Um, it's very complex and cool, and I think I'll probably drain this ink bottle faster than any other bottle that I currently have. This was a fantastic choice for this pen. And of course, as I said, I received this as a combination between um, this pen and um, and this ink together as part of my uh, True Fay Incredible box. They really knocked it out of the park with the color combinations here. Um, they also shipped it with a black Caveco Sport, which is also a good, a good color to combine with uh, this ink. So let me give you some art advice and we'll get into the drawing part. Ooh, that was a really wet A. Appreciate how wet that A was. All right. Art advice. Mm. You have to be willing to do it when you don't want to. This is actually um, counter to uh, some of the advice I give about seeking out joyful things, things that you like to do with your art. And I tend to be that way, but I definitely, um, you know, I've, I've talked a little bit about my struggles with depression and with anxiety and all these other things. And there's this constant desire to be distracted, um, which I think a lot of people have regardless of their uh, mental health. Um, so there are a lot of days that I don't really want to draw. And this channel actually helps me continue that. Um, the fact that I have goals for myself as an artist helps me continue doing that. But yeah, some days uh, you just start doing it even though you don't want to start and you let your passion take you the rest of the way uh, but to really level up in your ability sometimes you do have to do things when you don't feel like it um, let that sink in of course if you're just drawing for your own personal enjoyment then do it whenever you enjoy it that's totally fine speaking of enjoyment let's do a drawing before this drawing um, I tried to look at something that I'm, I guess, good at, uh, that, I, that this animal I keep coming back to drawing, which is a giraffe. Um, I don't know why, but I just keep thinking of giraffes. They're, they're funny creatures to me. Um, I enjoy drawing them. And then something that I'm not very good at drawing, which is um, machines and mechanics and robotics and that sort of thing. So um, robot giraffe for you guys. I, I hope you like it. <laughs> um, the the pen itself was uh, really great all throughout. I just felt in complete control of what I was drawing. You'll see me switch over to that um, pretty soon, as soon as I get my, my underdrawing and my foundational um, structures in. Um, but yeah, and I ended up uh, not doing my regular time-lapse thing. This is actually a full video that I took and, and shortened because I ended up doing this really fast. And I think um, the pen kind of accommodated me being able to work at that speed and just having a good idea. Um, it feels really good. I mean, I suppose whether it's a good idea or not, uh, you let me know what you think of it. But uh, having a really great picture in your mind of what you want to do and being able to just sit down and do it is really one of the most satisfying things to me as an artist. A lot of times I sit down um, and I just kind of uh, waffle a little bit or I don't know what I want to do and I end up doing something that I like but the process of getting there is really the hardest part of drawing for me. So um, it was nice to have this particular drawing where um, 
I just kind of knew what I wanted and I went for it and it looked like what I wanted it to look like and um, the end result is this, um, which is fun and uh, easy to do. Um, one thing I do kind of want to talk about is uh, how um, this compares to, again, a very a big favorite of many fountain pen lovers, the Twisby Eco. Um, and also my relationship with the Eco because it's changed a little bit. Um, it was pretty much my favorite fountain pen that I had for a very long time. Um, this is definitely taken over that, like of the two, I know that the, um, the Diamond 580 is a more expensive pen. So more expensive should equal better, right? But in this case, it is a lot better than the Eco. And if I were to choose between inking up this pen versus inking up the Eco, I would choose this one. So I think that there's a value to it that's um, equivalent to its price. Um, and the reason why I, I have kind of an issue with the Eco, why a lot of um, pen lovers do have an issue with the Eco, despite it being kind of a darling of the fountain pen community, it's um, is that the section has this cracking issue. And I got a whole video of that on my channel, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Um, but I'm hoping that the the very fact that we have this metal piece um, and then a nib collar, which is not the way that the Eco is set up, will prove to be a more sturdy pen because everything that I like about the Eco is here. Um, in addition to, I, I kind of like the shape of the nib and the size of it and all that stuff and the, the look of the pen is, is quite appealing to me. Um, but it has all of those qualities that I like in the Eco with, with hopefully not uh, the issue of the cracking section. Only time will tell, but for now it feels very strong and sturdy. And um, yeah, I really like it. Uh, and if you've been burned by your Eco and don't want to invest in Twisby pens anymore, that's totally understandable. But I have a feeling that this one has a little more stability and uh, long-term functionality, I suppose, uh, is a way of putting it. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend this. I think it's a good pen and I enjoyed drawing my little robot giraffe uh, w with it for you guys. And I've been using this for a while and it's consistently been a great writer. So yeah, cool, hope you enjoyed. For my final thoughts on this pen, honestly, um, it uh, is a home run. Compared to the Eco, this is definitely a step up um, in quality, in interest factor, in all around cool factor of the design. Um, if you really love your Twisby Eco and you wanna see what else Twisby has to offer, I definitely recommend the uh, Diamond 580 ALR. As well, and I'm not sure because I haven't used it for very long, but I have a suspicion that the metal section and the way that the uh, section is fitted together should be a little bit better for the cracking issue that we found um, as a part of the uh, Twisby Eco. You can see my video on that on this channel. Um, yeah, I think it's an overall win. I, I really love the design. I love the facets. I love the shape of the nib and just that extra uh, wow factor that it adds above the Eco. So please check that pen out if you are interested in uh, more from Twisby after falling in love with your Eco. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and I hope that you'll stick around for the next one, which I can't wait to share with you and it is coming soon. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time.